sack. Orca. Hello, everybody. I'm Oka. Wow. And I have Glitch Cat Seven, a very proficient uh, Mario player. Glitch Cat. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi. And um, I guess we'll get ready to uh, start here. Uh, um, the time will start on player one, so let's uh, get a countdown. Um, three. Oh, what? Okay. Uh, let's get a countdown going. Three. Oh, can I? Oh yeah. Here we go. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. Good luck. This is an excellent Super Mario game. Uh, you're going to see a lot of stuff that looks like it could be from the original Mario, but it's meshed up with a lot of new uh, custom elements. Yes, uh, there's a lot of um, custom SM sprites, etc., in this hack, but I tried to blend it in to uh, fit in with the original game. I like this level one because it's just it's good old-fashioned platforming. I, I appreciate starting the game off like that. Yeah, so something to note about Super Mario World platforming right off the bat, uh, there is something in this game we like to call slow fall. And that means that Mario will be falling more slowly if the jump button, either the spin or the regular jump, is being held in the air. And we can do something called re-grabs, which is literally just unpressing and repressing the button, literally re-grabbing it. And um, that will allow Mr. Mighty Mouse to control the speed of their fall a little bit. And that's going to be used all over the place. Nice H. Mr. Mighty Mouse there using slope speed as well. If you slide uh, Mario's butt down a slope and you neutral the D-pad when you jump, you'll have a little bit more speed than you normally would, and you can actually keep most of that speed uh, until you either get friction or um, go off the neutral. Using that again there with a spin jump. These dolphins are supposed to be in the water. Orca, what's up with that? Well, these dolphins are not in the water because, like that, you only have one shot, which is kind of the point. All right, nice level one. I think uh, one of the things that makes these games most fun to run is a very fun level one, because you're going to have to play it a million times. <laughs> so I appreciate that being the level one. All right, level All right, two. Hometown vibe. This is a level that, this is a level that the entire gimmick of the level is these pipes that move up and down. And these are actually in Vanilla Mario World as well. Yes, these are in Vanilla it, Mario uh, World, but these sprites are a bit modified to do more crazy things, like come down or grow longer. <clears throat> or be upside down in some cases. I don't think we saw the upside down growing pipes in the original. Another yeah. thing we didn't see in the original uh, are spines that behave this way, although they look just like they could be uh, from the original game and they're using the same sprite. Uh, but in this case, the Goombas, uh, Paragoombas didn't fly that way and Spinies as well. Uh, one thing I did want to point out, you notice Mr. Mighty Mouse, he's uh, crashed into those um, outlined blocks with a skull on it. There are a lot of different customized blocks in these games and um, usually if it has a skull on it that means don't touch it uh, but sometimes sprites are able to pass through them and Mario can't and that's a way for uh, designers like Orca to make a little gate for the player so they have to do something specific. Yes, no, we... One thing you'll notice about this game is there's lots of little custom everywhere. Ah, oh, it's such a hard trick. Yeah, that's so the Mr. first Mouse difficult is item to... trick. Yeah. Trying to grab that P-switch uh, out of the top there and uh, spin forward and use that to open the gate. There's a lot of different ways that you can activate P-switches. And the normal game obviously just makes you <laughs> just set them on the ground. But um, in these types of games, we like to do it in a little bit trickier of a way. I love the environment here, Orca. You've really got some some excellent custom stuff. The uh, the clouds in the back look very nice. Yeah, you might you might remember these clouds from Yoshi's Island cave levels. That's one thing that's uh, also excellent about these ha uh, games is that you're going to see a lot of stuff that you might recognize from another game, um, like we saw with some fan games. Nice H. Uh, we call the checkpoint an H because it looks like a little letter H. 
but lots of little fan game references throughout this. And uh, Mr. Mighty Mouse is cruising through this now, using again a lot of those regrabs. And uh, you saw that gray shell there. That means it's going to get two hits before it uh, stops moving. That is a vanilla asset, um, but in this game they're color coded gray, so the player knows what to look for. Shoutouts to Romic Races, by the way, with that. Yeah, the Super Mario World modding community has a special uh, patch that we can use. Mr. Mighty Mouse, nice job nice. getting in there. And, uh, it the looked end. like Mr. <laughs> yeah, it looked like Mr. Mighty Mouse just needed to run. Those uh, growing pipe sprites will overwrite blocks, and that's how it opens some of the gates that were closing the shell. And uh, if Mr. Mighty Mouse would have just hesitated, what what would have happened, Orca? That one block would have disappeared. Right? Yeah, it would have <laughs> not been fun. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely got me on my first playthrough. This is such an interesting level. Um, this is not the way screen transitions work in regular Mario. These are all one screen areas. We've also seen this in games like Invictus and Mega Man too, how the screens kind of move. And this is, uh, well, you want, you want to talk a little bit about this one, Orca? Yeah, this, uh, I introduced ASM here that will um, scroll the screen just when you enter the next screen. And like that, you can create rooms, and it's a pretty fun concept for a level, I would say. And this first really half of the level is uh, based on uh, shell jumps. Shell jumps. We all love them, but they are very difficult. Um, the essential premise behind shell jumps, uh, it pretty much is what you see. When you toss a shell, it becomes active. Mario can jump off of an active shell. And by knowing the right angle and timing to rebound it off a wall, uh, you can do this move that's become pretty standard in a lot of these Mario mods. It's one of my favorites, uh, the off the wall shell jumps. And of course, the on off blocks there to open the gate. On-off switches were not used this way in the original game, but here they opened the dotted line on-off blocks. Checkpoint, nice. A little bit more, Mr. Mighty Mouse needs to spin on that spiny that way because of those outlined uh, death blocks, and the solid death blocks will be solid for everything. These pipes that push you, or pipes, not uh, pipes, platforms rather, that lift you up, uh, some of these were not present in the original game, but they're using the same graphics, which I think is something so interesting about this game in particular, is that it really looks like it could have been original Mario, except maybe from a universe where it was very difficult. All right. Very good. <clears throat> Oh no, Mr. Mighty Mouse, you fell right onto those munchers and didn't die. What happened there? The the best part about that troll is the munchers, you think you're going to die, but there is actually an invisible block at the end there. <laughs> so the player breathes a sigh of relief and says, oh, they're safe, and then goes and dies anyway. That has happened it's, to it's, a, it's one of the best fake out trolls in the game, for sure. Yeah, lots of different tiles can be modified to have different properties in Mario modding. So uh, a dangerous muncher might actually be a safe piece of ground, and a safe piece of ground might be a dangerous muncher. Really nice P-Speed management here. Um, in, in the same way that Mario 3 has, Mario World also has P-Speed. And uh, it's a little bit easier to maintain, but it can be used to cross some of those gaps uh, that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Really nice shell jumps, that's excellent. And then catching that Yoshi in midair, um, that's not a free trick. That last trick is very difficult. Y you have to avoid grabbing the shell and but just touching it. And that can be very difficult, coming out of a Yoshi. Yeah, there's a lot of things that have to happen right in a row here. There's not a lot of time to rest in this level. The platforms are falling, the ropes are falling, Yoshi, everything's falling. And uh, yeah, like uh, Orca said, you need to nudge that shell. Again, nudging a shell uh, activates it and an active shell can be bounced off of. And something to point out too, um, the shell there, is it? Oh no, the shell is falling there, but later we'll see uh, one, one F zeros, which will come into play a little bit. One thing you'll see as we go along is this game has a decent amount of fairly long sections, which means when you die at the end of them, like I just did, you can lose a lot of time quickly, just from like one death as opposed to lots of small quick deaths that you often see in these games. 
getting into the Baby Yoshi section. Uh, this is the same thing from the original Mario World, except expressed much more difficultly. Baby Yoshi needs to eat five objects and nice midair catch. Very good. Oh. <laughs> and then abusing that uh, little little hitbox on that spike top there. They just don't have a hitbox when they turn like that, right? Exactly. It's uh, I'm terrified of that spiny every time. I always think one of these days it's going to kill me. And then it just never does. It never does. Oh gosh, this level. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Hey, you just went into the wall there. That's another one of those map 16 edits they're called. You can just make blocks act like things. And now normally these thwimps, these little stone brownie guys, uh, they don't behave this way in the original game. They jump up and down, uh, but here Orca's got them moving side to side. I thought this was such a cool inspiration, Orca. Yeah, this is uh, just made uh, to be super fun. Um, it's very satisfying to bounce on these thwimps. So I decided to make a secret exit with down. And there's an up pipe coming up. Oh, yeah. Nice. Very good. Up pipes. That, that up pipe. Yeah, up pipes Pain are very difficult. You, because it seems like the hitbox for the up pipe is the whole uh, width of the bottom of it, but actually you want to hit right in the middle. So bonking an up pipe to the left or to the right of center uh, won't get you in. And that's why up pipes are kind of notorious in these types of games. Especially the ones that you only get about one shot on most of them. Because yeah. these games are not forgiving. Yeah, that's something that can make, like Mr. Mighty Mouse said, that can make Kai Kaizo uh, speedrunning very difficult. Is not all deaths are created equally. But this is the uh, this is the morsel level. Do you want to talk a little bit about the inspiration for this one, Orca? Yes, uh, one of my favorite creators is called Morsel, and he made a game uh, called Dogs and Apes and Crocodiles. And this is a shout out to that hack, especially the, the first level. Here, the sections are rather short, but. Um, Getting the checkpoint and the goal, uh, you need to... Um, there's a very tight trick at the end everywhere. Oops. Uh, the, the trick at the end of this one. <laughs> and remember remember what we were talking about before about re-grabs. Basically, uh, double tapping the jump button for almost every jump, and that's allowing Mr. Mighty Mouse to get jumps that have a low vertical, but a wide horizontal, and allowing him to cross some of these different gaps, uh, especially with the dangerous muncher ceiling. Uh, Regrabbing is such an essential tool in a lot of these Mario games. It works in the vanilla game, they use it in the vanilla speedrun, mods, everything in between, uh, and being able to accurately control your jump is a big skill in games like that. Right there was a very nice regrab and a nice pixel landing nice. right on the edge of that pipe. Nice work. That was very difficult. We have a Switch Palace coming up where we don't do anything, so now would be a good time for donations. As well as the next level, because it's a very long platform, right? <laughs> I can absolutely give you as many.
Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2021 online, powered by Twitch. We're back. We're alive. We just had some technical difficulties. Don't worry. We're just getting things ready. We'll be back with the game very, very shortly. Don't worry. I'm good. Yep. Okay. Okay, we are back from our scheduled interruption. We're back for more platforming. And uh, right off the bat, in case you missed it before, Mr. Mighty Mouse using slope speed right there, neutraling the D-pad as you're pressing down uh, neutral left, right. As you're pressing down on that slope, we'll uh, launch Mr. Mighty Mouse off. And uh, what I had wanted to talk about before with this level as well, um, the grab blocks. You saw Mr. Mighty Mouse pick one up and then right there doing a grab block jump by pressing grab and jump on the same frame uh, to pick the block up kind of out of the air. <clears throat> Excuse me, out of the air um, in one motion. But Mr. Mighty Mouse does not want to be holding a grab block when he touches an enemy uh, that will potentially break the block. That coin right there being used as a guide to let Mr. Mighty Mouse know. Uh, Orca, who made this, uh, you put a lot of little helpful stuff like that in for the player. And that fish, too. And that fish that is only for Mighty Mouse. <laughs> All right, now he has to get some P-Speed. Very nice. <laughs> nice job. It's a tight ending. Yeah, this is just such a such a pretty game with so much... It's such a nice blending of the old original Mario and a lot of new custom elements that got thrown in. This level, oh my gosh. This is a really tricky one. How do you feel, Moss? How do you feel going into this one? I, uh, this is like the, the death row. There's a really long platform level and then it's followed by an auto scroller. So in runs, it's like you just want to get through these two and we'll, then we'll be good. <laughs> Yeah, auto scrollers can be very tricky and very time consuming in a speed run to take a death. Uh, in this level, um, this has a special property, um, which I can kind of help explain a little bit. The nets, if you remember, uh, maybe Iggy's castle in the original Mario, you had those nets and the Koopas climb on the nets and there's that little turnaround part. When Mario punches that turnaround part, uh, he flips around and goes to the back of the net. That's what's happening here. Uh, the vines cause Mario to grab them from behind instead of on the front. And when Mario is behind, uh, certain enemies that pass in front of it won't be able to hurt Mario. And that is what's going on here. That's how Mr. Mighty Mouse is able to avoid that big boo. And uh, we'll need to use that. We'll see that coming up later in the level. Um, where, where did you get the idea for this, Orca? Was it from the, the, the nets in the game, or did you, were you thinking of something else? Um, to be honest, I found uh, the blocks that make Mario go behind the vines, and I decided to use them. There are a lot of resources we can use as hackers, and sometimes um, they uh, inspire an idea for a level, like in this case. So basically, you yeah, need the vines to um, um, get through certain sections here. One coming up right now. Yeah, if Mr. Mighty Mouse would not have been behind those vines, those eeries would have just crashed right into him. This section, no. oh, we'll get to see it soon, don't worry, but it's a really neat section. But that's the one thing I wanted to mention, too, is that a lot of these Mario uh, mods and stuff do exactly like what Orca's talking about. We just take something that was in the original game, but use it in an interesting new context to bring out a lot of the extra skill and difficulty uh, that wouldn't have been available in the original. Right. 
if Mr. Mighty Mouse wouldn't have thrown that grab block when he did, uh, remember that holding a grab block and contacting an enemy with it will break the grab block and destroy the enemy, so uh, he wouldn't have been able to get through. And this this part, I just, I love this little obstacle. I thought it was so neat. I like superstars and waiting, bouncing on the Koopa, waiting for the superstar to move forward. Nice door. Very nice. We might get to see a quick strat for this boss. This is the big boo, and we, uh, you might remember this again from original Mario. You probably are sick of hearing me say that, but um, it works pretty much the same way, um, and most of these mods recontextualize the original bosses. So it, Big Boo does the same thing here. It's just that the room that Big Boo is being fought in is uh, different, and that was the quick kill. Nice job. That was the time save. Nice speed spread. There we go. Also, you have to know that uh, just touching the boo uh, will also kill Mario in this case. Uh, yes, that's something... Uh, actually, I don't know if I remember that. <laughs> um, but in the original game, Big Boo does not have any kind of a hitbox. Um, but mods uh, famously... Uh, I think Grand Poo World 2 was the first one that started that trend, giving Big Boo a hitbox. This is... I love this level. I, Org, I think this is one of my favorites uh, in the game. This is actually a vanilla thing. If you remember maybe from Roy's castle, the brown block snake, there's a sprite at the back of that brown block snake that is the, it's weird to say, but it's the block that's eating the other blocks. And that's what's being used here. When Mr. Mighty Mouse touches the brown uh, blocks on screen, they will activate that eating sprite. And then the eating sprite will just continue to Ch just truck along like Pac-Man and eat everything in its path and um, that will be destroying floors and forcing Mr. Mighty Mouse to move quickly. Uh, you also notice that the uh, eating blocks kind of split up a little bit and that's some custom. I love that trick right there, using the shell jump to wait for the eating block to open the way and uh, also eating blocks will eat pipes so Mr. Mighty Mouse <laughs> needs to get in there quickly. That pipe would have and been now, Yes, yeah, yeah, it would have been way gone. Uh, Mr. Mighty Mouse now needing to hit the outlined blocks that you see up above there. Uh, we call them Kaizo blocks or invisible blocks. Sometimes they're outlined, sometimes they're not. Here they're being outlined so that Mr. Mighty Mouse knows need to hit those because if Mr. Mighty Mouse didn't, it wouldn't complete the path for the eating sprite, and we need to make sure that that eating sprite can consume all the blocks in its way to make it to the next section. Orb. Orb. <laughs> Definitely one of my favorite levels in this game. Yeah, that was really well played. Nicely done. So we're going to do the secret exit level, or a secret exit of this level first. And it is, a, uh, it is one of the crazier looking sections in this game for sure. It's going to get uh, a bit difficult in this secret exit. <clears> there <throat> will be a lot of shells and a lot of Yoshis. <laughs> There's an up pipe uh, behind that wall. Yeah, this is such an interesting part. Uh, the first thing to notice about this part is that uh, there are some semi-transparent note blocks that are down there at the bottom of the screen. Those are special blocks, and they have a special purpose. Mario can't touch them. Uh, it'll just pass right through, but they act like a bouncing note block for any other sprite that touches them. And that is how uh, these sprites are bouncing up and down, and these platforms uh, keep bouncing up and down as well. Uh, again, needing to open the on-off blocks to clear the way, and uh, using really tight re-grabs. Again, double tapping the jump to get a low vertical and a long horizontal on the jump. Did you have any particular inspiration in mind for this one, Orca? I wanted to make a bouncy level. <laughs> I think that's that's all I can say. And I wanted to use these uh, sprite note blocks and have a lot of Yoshis and a lot of shells. Because shells are always fun. Hey, I, I I personally agree. I know some some Kaizo players might have another thought, but uh, 
I think they're very, very fun. It's, it's a, often a trick of timing and positioning when you're throwing a shell. You have to be in the right spot to make the right angle as the shell rebounds from the wall and uh, know when to throw it uh, and how far away from the wall. There's a lot of little factors that line up, but they look so cool when you get them. And then, of course, catching Yoshi in midair. Um, catching anything in midair in this game is pretty tricky. Midair jumps off of something. Yeah. Yoshi is particularly difficult to catch because Mr. Mighty Mouse needs to line up Mario's feet so that it touches Yoshi's saddle. Nice job. Nice. That can be a very, very tough level to get the hang of. Yeah, out. you need a lot of control. So much particular timing. This is another level where we're going to see some stuff that was modified just a little bit. I don't think these circular, uh, circularly flying blue Koopas were uh, part of the original game. No, they were not. Um, there are also some stationary Koopas, and you basically need the Fire Flower to clear the way to get the Koopas out of the way. Yeah, I, I love Fire Flower usage, and this level has such a cool part of it. Surfing on this multicolored, we call it a disco shell, and then needing to snipe the chuck out of the way with fire, but then needing that gray platform to land on and crouch so that they'll uh, be able to surf on the disco shell and get to the next section that way. I love that little turnaround with the, the chuck. It's just very succinct, I guess you could say. Well done. That was good. <laughs> that was really fast. That is not an easy level. So we're gonna yeah. we're gonna see them a little bit more. Um, well, I guess we can talk about that in a bit. The uh, multicolored disco shells. The jank fridge. Speaking of not easy levels. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. So here we go. We've got uh, stuff on a line, and uh, you've seen this kind of in uh, other games. And uh, Super Mario Maker had a lot of stuff moving on lines uh, that didn't really work that way originally. But um, with some help from some friends, we've got just about anything that can move on a line. The spring and uh, many other things as well. That rotating platform. This is. Well, I don't know. What, what were you thinking about this one, Marco? Well, okay, so this level is called the Jank Fridge, and all I wanted to do is use a lot of crazy sprites. They're not janky, but they move on lines and they go all over the place, and um, this level turned out very difficult, but let's see how Mighty Mouse um, handles this. He has to catch that platform, and now the ending is very tricky. Nice. Nice job. That's a no this block there. This is a perfect time for donations. Oh, we've got a lot coming in. Uh, we've got a lot of donations uh, who are uh, in honor of our tech crew for getting the stream back online. We've got a $50 anonymous donation that just says tech crew love. We've got a uh, $50 donation from Tink Dora and Omega Wild who says here's $50 to start a tech crew appreciation train. Putting this towards Bloodstain 2 Episode 2 Ultimate. Thank you very much. And a $25 uh, donation from Not Tech Team, who just says Tech Team Heart. You can keep going if you want. We sure. have a Switch Palace coming up next, and I'm also donating $100 per missed yump. I've missed one so far. We'll see if we can get another one. A yump okay. being a first frame jump off the P Switch. Well then, I'm happy to give you more donations. Uh, we've got $50 from Jazz and Steven. <laughs> Greetings from London. First time donating, but years of watching and all of the runners. Thank you for all you do and save all the Marios. We've got uh, $50 from Deppy Slide. who says, hello from SMW Central. I always love to see some Mario ROM hacks at GDQ. Good luck, you all are doing great so far. Shout out to the awesome Kaizo community. <laughs> got a five dollar donation from eric draven first time donating to this wonderful cause good luck mr mighty mouse and orb <laughs> orb all right i think we're about to see yeah a little bit of a uh, little bit of disco shell action here um that's what we call these multicolored shells that move around um yellow koopas can turn into them in the original game and in this one, there are some special boxes that you'll see in the next section. When Mr. Mighty Mouse throws a shell upward into those boxes, it will just automatically become a disco shell. Uh, disco shells are 
I, I think they're lovely, and I think, Orca, you would agree. I, um, I love disco shells, yeah. And also, yes. shout-outs to Noviso for making this uh, special block. But disco shells can be a little bit of a point of contention uh, because they're very difficult to work with. They, first of all, track Mario's movement, so they're trying to run right into you wherever they are, and that means that you can keep it below you while you bounce on it. But this isn't a normal bounce. The disco shell is shaped like a wedge, so Mr. Mighty Mouse is trying to hit only the, the left or the right side because you're not just bouncing up, you're actually getting, like, kicked off in a direction, and that can make them really difficult. Uh, I gotta say, Orca, this little survival section here is just one of my favorites. I think it's such an interesting trick of level design to get the player to stop moving and just hang out in, in one area for a little bit. Could you talk a little bit about that, this obstacle, maybe? Yeah, I, I wanted to uh, include a survival section with Disco Shells because I personally am really a fan of it. And I also uh, gave you a pokey to play with while you wait. Because <laughs> you have about nine seconds for the P-Switch. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but Actually, in that moment, it's very difficult because the, the disco shell will push you all over the place and you have to control that somehow. Ah, like that. Very difficult. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an example of a little bit of the uh, unwieldy movement that a disco shell can have. Uh, it, like I said, it might look like Mr. Mighty Mouse is just bop, 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 just bouncing up and down, uh, but he is actually kind of moving on a wedge shape. And keep in mind, the two, that if he gets too far to the left or the right of that platform, uh, the disco shell will just fall right off the edge and he won't be able to survive. So very careful positioning and uh, jump control going on here. Even though these look like regular bounces, I assure you they are advanced bounces. Oh. Luckily, oh. the sections are very short Not on this level. being nice today. Now you got this. One other cool thing to note about that section too is you you if you were if you were to spin jump, you would uh, just destroy the disco shell, and you could spin jump on top of the pokey. But uh, since you have to be surfing on the disco uh, and hit the P switch in order to start this whole section, uh, it forces you to hang out on the disco, which I thought was really creative. You could also frame perfectly jump off the P-Switch. <laughs> that, is, that is true. We call them a P-Switch jump Why? or a yump uh, when Mario, the first frame, uh, 60 FPS, first frame that Mario contacts uh, the P-Switch, you would be able to get a, uh, get a jump. They're a very, very common swag trick in a lot of these games. Uh, this is, if there's one section in the game that looks harder than it is, I would say it's this one. Yeah, there's a lot of factors that have to go correctly right in this section. First the up throw, the P-switch landing, and then the disco surf, and then getting out of this section. Uh, packing a lot into a very small area. And an up pipe at the end. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Well done. Oh. Now we can get back to playing the game. No. So this is another neat little property here. Uh, where we've got more grab blocks, and uh, this this is a vanilla property. You could, in theory, do this in the original game, but it, it's a lot easier in mods like this. The kicking Koopa will kick and activate any grab block that it comes in contact with, and activated grab blocks, oddly enough, can you can spin jump on them and they act like just you can just bounce off them. It's kind of strange, um, but that's what's going on here. And then also, too, those outlined blue blocks that you see, the purpose of them is to reflect the grab block. Um, are, are those, those are retextured triangles, right? Those little um, pink triangles that Mario uses to run up a pipe or up the side of a vertical wall. You could do um, that. They reflect grab blocks. Is that what those are working? Yeah, you could do that uh, with uh, the vanilla steep slope. They reflect uh, oh, grab yeah. blocks, but these uh, blocks are um, easier to use when they're made custom. Another thing to notice is the um, both disco shells in this section will move to the right no matter what you do. So they are independent of Mario's movement, like this one right here. Nice. 
Nice job. Yeah, that's a really helpful thing. A lot of times under the hood, a lot of these uh, Mario mods will have quality of life things like this, that if it's working, the player just has a smooth experience, but given the fact that Mario World as a game was never really meant to be turned into such a thing as this, um, there are certain things in the code that need to be smoothed out a little bit. Fortunately, the community has come together to provide a lot of custom fixes and make these games a lot smoother. Yes. This is one of my favorite sections I love. Uh, throwing the uh, yellow shell into those blocks creates a disco shell. And uh, Mr. Mighty Mouse is going to set up for, I think, the coolest swag orb ending. Oh, oh it'll, it, no, we're, we're, we're just building hype. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> It's a, it's a hard trick to do for sure. And one thing to notice too, uh, and, and I remember this because I uh, did play testing for this game, um, there is a coin trail. And uh, oftentimes makers will add things like that to just kind of help the player out, show them where they need to go or where they need to be contacting a shell. And I remember when I played that section, the first time I could not for the life of me figure out how to bounce off these disco shells correctly. So I said, Orca, please just put a coin there so we know where to go. So thanks for that, bud. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for playtesting again. <laughs> Those coins uh, would not pleasure. have been down. Yeah, the, the community really comes together to make these games something special. Nice job, Or, or. Very nice. It's a long level. Long it is. So this is the level where if we were doing an any percent run, our run would end. It would end at this level. We are doing 100%. That's why you got all these Switch Pal switches. <clears throat> exactly. So this is another level that uses uh, a lot of jumping bouncing and re-grabbing. You can re-grab while you're spin jumping as well, that's very important. And using these uh, layer two uh, smashing tiles to create a little bit of excitement. These sparkies there will move around whatever surface you set them on. And uh, Big Mario is needed here um, to break through those blocks. And then right here at the end, yeah, good job to get that damage boost and the uh, mid-air hit on the thwomp. Nice. Checkpoint. That was clean. One thing to note, and this is kind of just a side note, you notice Mr. Mighty Mouse starting out on that gray platform that falls, but that brown platform that falls even faster is um, just a, a regular brown platform that isn't on a line. Normally in the regular game, they're on a line, and they would go onto the line and just start moving. Nice mid-air Yoshi catch, too. If Mario uh, lands on Yoshi while spinning, uh, spin state will be preserved while riding Yoshi. All right, so... Very tricky damage boosting. So this ending is very tricky. You have to land right Ooh. on the edge. <laughs> At first try. Nice. I, I, you know, I, I have always thought just landing on the edge pixel with the thwomp is uh, always just, even in regular Mario, just such a... Such a cool move. That's very satisfying. Oh, oof. So this is uh, another big boo, and uh, th this one is really interesting, I thought. Uh, there are platforms, kind of bouncy platforms, being shot out of a cannon on the right side there, and that's what Mr. Mighty Mouse is using, and got the speed strat. Nice work. Very nice. So by grabbing that upper block there, uh, Mr. Mighty Mouse created a little gap for Mario to hide in, and that's going to make this fight just a little bit easier because he doesn't have to be constantly jumping on these platforms and inviting the risk of touching a spike or falling in a pit or something else. Nice job. Here we go. I actually really like that boss. It's a good boss, Orca. I'm going to quote you on that. <laughs> <laughs> I might be one of the only ones. <laughs> that is true. It's very difficult, like I said, to make a, 
make a big boo boss because they just have that one behavior and you just have to make a room for them. But this level, we're going into space and some of these platforms are behaving a little strangely, moving up or moving down, depending on uh, what the situation calls for. But uh, I really, really like the background here. Is this from something in particular or? This background you may remember from Star Fox. This is the Venom background. That's also where the oh, music's from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. recognize the music. I, don't know, I, don't, I gotta brush up on my Star Fox. Nice H. And using some re-grabs again and some really tight momentum. One thing to note about some of these platform jumps is that uh, if you have momentum, you will be able to jump a little bit higher. So in some cases, Mr. Mighty Mouse is like running along the platform or taking advantage of the whole horizontal space to get a little bit more vertical distance on the jump that they're about to make. Very tight control jumps here in this section. Watching out for the munchers and a lot of cool bounce combos. Let's see if we get the up pipe. Oh. Nice. It's, it seems Oof. like the harder the level, the um, I had a chance of a one-shot in this run. <laughs> I know. That is a hard level, but very well played. That's that's my favorite level in the game. <clears throat> it's one of the things I love about this hack is the focus on what we might call traditional platforming, just good old-fashioned tight hard jumps. I love it. I like how at the end of the last level, you went to an environment, like a background that looked like this, and now in the next level, here we are falling down this area. Uh, I thought this level was super creative as well, uh, having to use a lot of dropping and uh, P-switches as well, activating the P-switch in the air in order to create the coin trail to show where to go and uh, to open and close some gates and create boxes that Mr. Mighty Mouse will need to stand on in order to get through these sections. Uh, I, this, I love the, uh, I just absolutely love this level, honestly. And another Yoshi, another all. And another Great orc. job. Wow. That was a really good one. That is a difficult level to learn, and it's the kind of level that you really need to know what is coming up because some of those uh, drops and bounces, you have to react very quickly. <clears throat> and this is the final level. Let's go. We have arrived. This level is four hard, long sections followed by a final rush. And something to note, um, that's, you notice the two switch blocks at the beginning there, that's why we needed to get the switches. That's a, a common thing in a lot of these. Uh, in, to require the player to get the switches, you'll have to cross a bridge made out of all the blocks that the switches activated, and that's the check to ensure that you got them. Here we're using some uh, red homing bullets. Uh, again, uh, this is this is a little a morsel homage, if I'm not mistaken, right? That's why I've seen those the first time, yeah. Yeah, Morsel likes to use, uh, Morsel, a uh, simultaneously feared and respected Mario creator, likes to use those uh, homing bullets a lot in some sections. Uh, but this is kind of a wrap-up of a lot of the themes that we've already seen. This is a, a fun, common thing in a lot of these games to kind of reprise some of the situations, but make them either trickier uh, or just kind of do something new with them. And here we're using these thwimps again that have a strange movement. And that blue question block is acting like a P-switch in this section. Instead of having to give the player an object that they must hit with their feet, um, it can be modified to just allow them to just hit a block. And they need that open because Mr. Mighty Mouse needs to get in the pipe up there. Another section with uh, thwimps and a little bit of downward motion. Uh, really tricky landings. Keep in mind the thwimps are only uh, one block or sort of grid space wide. Nice save Whoa. getting into the right. That was really good. That was a little bit of improvisation, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, really nice I reaction. normally go on the left, and I had to react to the last second for that. And that's where having really masterful control over the character in games like this can really make the difference because um, you can do some saves like that or be able to help yourself out in a clutch moment. But now using these bouncing platforms and the grab block again. Nice. I love the midair uh, grab block bounce. That's a really classic thing in a lot of these, but it's such a fun trick. Okay. Oh, wow. Very well played. There we go. Now, instead of a final boss, 
Orca put in a final five room rush. I like to think of it as like a Super Metroid escape homage. It kind of is, yeah. And at the end of the, the fifth room, it's time. Yeah, time will be when we enter the pipe at the end of the fifth room, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. But in uh, in a traditional style, uh, this is this is a very common thing in in uh, Kaizo games as well. Uh, what the, the the five room castle? Only this one is four. Uh, but the basic idea is there's four or five or sometimes six or too many rooms uh, where you have to go through all of the challenges in the small room and uh, make it to the end in time. And you have to do it all in one go. And this is okay, the last time is coming up when we get in the pipe here. Yep, time is going to end when we enter the pipe here. Done. That's game. Oh, GG, Mr. Minus. Excellent run. What a great run. No. Nice enough to give us a fun little cape to play with at the end. Cape. Yo, I just want to say thank you to Orca for making this. Uh, thank you to Glitchcat for commentating. And honestly, just thank you to the entire Kaizo community. I'm, uh, I can honestly say you're the best community I've ever been in, and my life would be drastically different if I hadn't met you. So, so thank you, everyone. I'll second that. I would like to shout out everybody who um, makes custom code, sprites, blocks, music, graphics um, that we use. Um, without them, like, we couldn't do anything. So shout outs to everybody. And shout outs to GDQ and Mr. Mighty Mouse and Glitchcat. Oh, thanks. That was a mind-blowing run of uh, one of, I think, the best SMW hacks of the year. Uh, big shout out to Mr. Mighty Mouse and uh, Glitch Cat and Orca on commentary. Really, really good run. You guys are in for another good run coming up. We've got X-Men, the arcade game. You've got the six-player Japanese version. This is the hardest version, thanks to your donations. You've made it a much more difficult run. That's coming up with LROCK617 in just a moment. In the meantime, let me give you some more donations. Coming off that run, we got $50 from the Redneck Wizard, who says, the true final boss is a pipe. Proud of you, man. Good luck with your run. We've got $10 from Marshillin. Much love from my Kaizo community. Mr. Mighty Mouse is killing this run. 50 bucks from c -Not. Great run so far, Mighty Mouse, Glitch Cat, and Orca. Keep going. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. And we had a $1,000 donation from Francis, who says, loved watching GDQ live for the first time. And this comfort zone run is a highlight. Amazed by the creativity of Orca and the skill of Mr. Mighty Mouse. Love to the whole GDQ community. Thank you so much for that really generous donation. Okay, we're gonna send you off to an interview right now. We've got Blecky sitting down with the runner of Castlevania III Dracula's Course, uh, Curse, Freelant. Take it away. Hello, hey everybody, I am, I am Blecky. Um, really looking forward to CV3. It, of course, is going to be um, a donation bid war between Trevor and Alucard, uh, run by Freeland uh, coming up here. How are you doing today, Freeland? Doing all right. A little tired. Haven't slept yeah, all yeah. night. That's uh, more due to the excitement than more than anything. Nice. Cool. It's always good to be pumped up. Um, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. I saw that actually uh, Alucard is quite a bit ahead. Um, in the bid war, but that doesn't mean we can't uh, kind of give Trevor the oomph he might need. Now, what I love about CV3 is that, of course, there are four different ways to play the game. The two available ones to us today, of course, being Trevor 
and Alucard. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of what the viewers should expect from each run and um, like what, what might uh, in incentivize them to donate for one over the other? So the Trevor only speeder is kind of like a super long version of the first Castlevania game point your classic platformer, use your sub weapons whip to get through the stage boss fight at the, and you have your boss fight at the end of each stage and all that. Uh, the Alcard run is more technically demanding. It's quicker. It's a three minute faster run. And it involves Alucard's ability to fly, which is faster than walking in certain situations, but you have to manage your heart count because the flight uses hearts. There's also some neat features that Alucard can do in the run, and a lot of his stages move by quicker, except for one very long stage, right smack dab in the middle of the run. Yeah, and yet he is, I think, the fastest run of the four possible ones, right? Yeah, because Alucard plays the, uh, I believe, the least number of stages. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Overall. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely loved this game as a kid. Um, can you tell me a little bit about kind of how luck compares in each run? Uh, kind of the biggest element of luck in this game it comes down to the uh, enemy drops. They're inconsistent from run to run, but what we found out is that every fifth enemy drop in the game yields a sub weapon drop. So if we're paying attention to the number of drops that occur during the game, we can kind of anticipate when a sub weapon drop is coming. And certain enemies are prone to dropping. You'll see that more in the Trevor only run. In the Alucard run, it's kind of a hit or miss for the most part because Alucard's fireball attack is uh, very inconsistent when it comes to killing enemies mm -hmm. in a certain frame set, basically. Gotcha. And what do you mean by that exactly? Like, like what makes it inconsistent? Of course, uh, Alucard's fireball attack is on bosses, uh, not bosses, sorry. Certain enemies might do yield uh, double damage if you have two fireballs in the overlapping hitbox, but uh, that usually doesn't play out for common enemies. And most likely the drops occur due to us uh, being on a specific frame in the game, kind of like how Castlevania 1 works, but le uh, there's less research on that one. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, the Holy yeah, Water so sub weapon. Holy Water sub weapon deals damage every four frames, and I think that has something to do with uh, Castlevania Three and a possible frame rule system in there. Oh, I see. I see. Very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, so NES, of course, has a lot of brutally hard games, but I think Castlevania Three really is my favorite in terms of striking the balance between really hard but really fun. Um, and I always thought that even kind of as a kid. Did you did you play it much as a kid at all? Yeah, I played it a lot. Uh played it. But uh as a kid I never got past the clock tower stage. Oh yeah. And, uh, the grant if you go to the grant run, you take the clock tower stage, so I didn't really get anywhere on that game. Gotcha. Did you ever try the other route? Yeah. I didn't start uh doing any other routes because I didn't know much about the game until Started watching some uh, videos on YouTube of KMAC pretty much destroying the game about five, six years ago. Yeah, so so you play this game as a kid. You can't beat stage two. You come back, and then now you're speedrunning it. So what is it like to kind of come back so many years later and kind of exact your revenge on this game, which, which tormented you as a kid? Yeah, it's a very satisfying feeling to uh, be able to beat a game that 20 years ago gave you a hard time. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, do you have a favorite route of the four that you particularly like playing? I would say from a speedrun standpoint, my favorite route is uh, Alucard, uh, Alucard route because it's the fastest and also it's the uh, most optimized route to do. It can be mm. frustrating to run at times, but I'd say from a casual standpoint, my favorite route is probably Cypher because of her spells being very useful for the game. Mm -hmm. Although it also makes her the most frustrating speedrun before because there's so many utilities you can do with them. Oh, really? I'm surprised that makes it frustrating. I would have thought it kind of like feels cool with the good flow. What ends up making it frustrating? The birds. Ah, of course, the birds. And just needing to kind of like precisely cast your spells. Yeah, precisely cast your spells. I think one of them includes a uh, offset from stairs, similar to the uh, Grant route with the... Uh, similar to the Grant route with the stairs glitch, if you freeze near stairs and you demiss the line and Cypher can continue climbing on invisible stairs. It's actually used in the run. I've ever hit that trick before, but I've seen it. Got it, got it. Cool. 
Um, we do have a few questions from social media coming your way. Um, so let's see what we've got here. First, we got um, from Edge Orangey. We've got the question, what's your vote for best and worst Castlevania game? Best Castlevania game would probably be uh, Symphony of Night, worst Castlevania game, the advent Castlevania Adventure on Game Boy. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah, those Game Boy ones can really be re pretty rough around the edges. <laughs> it was very early on the system. I was say Game Boy uh, Castlevania Adventures like super uh, basically uh, Castlevania with Super Mario rules in there. Get hit mm -hmm, and you lose yeah. your uh, whip upgrade kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's right. Um, let's go to this next one from Arusa Warren. Uh, how how much time did it take to masterize a speed run of a Castlevania game? Uh, to learn to start running the. Uh, out, uh, each specific run, I think it took me about two months to learn the Trevor only run, and and then two years of pra practice and uh, lots of state state practice, a lot of ru dead runs, and to get the times that I've gotten. It's kind of the same thing with Alucard. It's although it's uh, not as demanding as some of the other Castlevania speed run speed runs to grind. Fortunately, right. That so I can go on and off with this game. Whereas yeah. other ones kind of require a much longer grind to get an improvement on. Right, right. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Freeland. Your run is coming up real soon. Um, Alucard is currently ahead. Forever, for any um, hardcore Trevor fans out there, you got your work cut out for you. Um, so let's see those donations come in for Trevor versus Alucard in the bid war. Thank you so much for joining us today, Freeland. All right, thank you. Thank you for mailing. Tossing it back to the front, stay tuned for the next run. Welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2021, powered by Twitch. I'm Cautious Blowers. I'm going to be here with you for this next game. Coming up, we've got Elrock 617 with X-Men, the arcade game. One of my favorite games as a kid. Uh, in the meantime, I've got a few more donations for you. We've got $25 from Narojima, who says... Hoping, to, uh, hoping the best to all of the runners, commentators, and everyone in between. Let's beat cancer one glitch at a time. Thank you very much. And we got $10 from Mom, 
who says, small donation to help reach $2 million for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Well, no donation is too small. You know, it's a minimum $5 donation. And any donation helps because all that money is going straight to PCF. Thank you so much. We've got $25 from Aeronym. Chat, don't forget to hydrate and to stretch your legs. I love your work, GDQ, and I give what I can. Thank you for that important reminder, Aaronem. I think I'll do that right now. All right. I think we're set up. So I want to give you one quick intro for this next run. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of poetry, if you don't mind. <clears throat> There's no place to hide, no place to run. The mutant age has now begun. Magneto's hordes are on their way to pillage, burn, and plunder. But there's one team that will not yield. The team that strikes like thunder. It's X-Men the Arcade Game with Elrock 617. Take it away.